get started. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, just a reminder that given the unprecedented circumstances concerning the <coughs> corona coronavirus, uh, Governor Baker did issue an order allowing us some relief from the open meeting law provisions, and we've been able to use that throughout this period. And today we'll be doing the same using remote collaboration technology. Should there be any problem for our team here, uh, uh, and somehow we get disconnected, please go to the um, <clears throat> MGC's website at massgaming.com and we'll have instructions. <clears throat> Excuse me. But so far our technology, because of the, the great work of our IT team has been really, um, we've really been able to operate seamlessly. So again, we give thanks to that team. Um, getting uh, started today for um, call of order, public meeting number 78. Today is Wednesday, June 10th, starting today's meeting at 10 a.m. for agenda setting purposes. Good morning, everyone. And for those of you with your faces there, it's nice to see your faces. For those who have called in, you can um, chime in. Um, if there's anything here that is of interest to you in terms of making sure that we get it on our agenda properly. So we'll get started. Um, approval of minutes, Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. In your packet, uh, you have the minutes of the May 27th agenda setting meeting. Uh, I would move their approval subject to any corrections for typographical errors or any other non-material matters. I second that. Thank you, Commissioner. Any discussion, edits? Oh, good morning, um, Eileen. Um, good morning. I realized I had not taken a, a quorum, but I, I think that you were there. So but all five, I can see all five commissioners are there. Mr. Stebbins a little in the dark today, but I see you. Um, so we have a motion. I know <laughs> yesterday I was the opposite. It was all white. Uh, the sun is a challenge. Um, we have a motion on the table for the approval of the minutes. Any edits, comments? Okay. Take a roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And I vote yes. Thank you, Sharp. Five zero. Okay. I'm just looking because if, for some reason I'm having a little bit of a challenge. Visually, there we go. Um, we'll start with our notes. Right off the bat, administrative update. This, uh, the meetings, um, we've included now a meeting for this Thursday, June 11th. Uh, typically, we do have an administrative update um, at each meeting for June 11th. Karen, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we need that in particular because that meeting is very focused on the topic at hand as far as the, the guidelines for uh, casino reopening. So I would suggest not, uh, we don't need to do that for that meeting. And I don't think that's uh, necessarily posted, but for subsequent meetings at a regular cadence, I would continue to have that administrative update. Right. And then the, the regular cadence of full meeting will be June 18th. What, um, <clears throat> We will be, of course, on, uh, we're gonna be speaking about uh, another meeting that we're going to put uh, scheduled for Tuesday, I guess that's June 16th, correct? Yes, yes. That also will be, um, we might as well just discuss those two special meetings now. Right. Before we go to regulation. So June 11th is Thursday, that's gonna be limited to discussion on reopening protocols for the gaming floors, correct? Correct. <clears throat> and we will have um, representation from the licensees there and we will have, you've already received um, some, guide, uh, some draft guidelines. Right. On Tuesday the 16th, 
Karen, do you want to just update everyone on what is planned for that? Yeah, so that, that uh, similar to what we did with the uh, casinos uh, reopening, where we had somewhat of a roundtable discussion to get some input on what we needed to do from the licensees, the plan is to have a meeting on Tuesday with the stakeholders for racing to make sure we're uh, identifying all the things that need to be done and taking all points of view into consideration as far as the plans for reopening. I have my conversations with Alex, she's uh, on top of the plan. Uh, we understand that racing is uh, scheduled to reopen in phase three according to the governor's guidelines. So this uh, is very timely so that we will be prepared. Uh, I don't know if Alex has any further comments, but I would, I would defer to her at this point. Alex? Yeah, Good no morning. further um, comments other than, you know, we'll be ready to um, work on Tuesday with that plan that we've been um, working on for the last several months. And that um, will be reopening of the track. <clears throat> I have a couple of questions. One, we had a request for certain topics to be brought up at our next, um, our next scheduled meeting, that's Thursday. I don't think that the items that Mr. McHugh raised in his letter would be uh, appropriate for Thursday's meeting because that's about the gaming floor. Right. Would those topics, because you, I've you've shared the letter, of course, with you, Alex, would those topics be um, appropriate for the opening of the track on on Tuesday? So all three, or one, two, or three of them? Yeah, um, a couple of those issues are were on the agenda um, before on that May um, 12th meeting. I mean, uh, March 12th meeting when we um, were anticipating opening. Um, and so, for instance, the um, racing officials, um, in the letter from the harness horsemen, they asked for that list. That's on our website, on the agenda, um, under the agenda materials for that March um, uh, 12th meeting, if they want to look at that. Um, those haven't changed. So right now, um, that can go on, um, you know, a, a, a commission meeting to be approved. Um, and same with. Um, can, I just, can we just back up on that? So is that under? Is that a item a number seventeen? Yes. Under review. So I guess my question is, do we have that be included on Tuesday? And it's a round table, Karen. Is that? Would it still be appropriate? We could, or could we make it a subsection and a new section? Does that make sense? Is it connected, or is it? Is it broad? It's really broader than. Is it broader than? It's broader, but my recommendation is either do it on the 16th or the 18th. So we're only talking about two days difference. So I would defer to Alex on when it's uh, convenient for her. We may want to do all the racing stuff all at once and just get it done on the 16th. That's what I'm Alex wondering, given that they will be there. You right. Know. Yeah, we could plan on doing that on the um, 16th. So maybe what we do is we have our round table discussion. And I think we did this the last time because we had to deal with a deadline moval, uh, um, um, a deadline issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen, so we'll just put it as put these particular items as a second um, item for uh, in addition to the round table on Tuesday. Okay. If that makes sense. So number so number seventeen goes to uh, 0616. And then the other ones, um, are there any others under review that also are aligned with what Mr. McHugh Um Number eighteen. Um, the PPC waiver of the qualifying rules. It's slightly different. Um, uh, Plan Ridge had put in a request to move the number of days from 30 to 45 and the um, harness horsemen are asking for a, um, a waiver back to um, November. So it's a, is this an item again and, and Commissioner Cameron I'm, I'm looking at you you just can't see me doing that because we're so small. Uh, <laughs> But, and you don't know where you're sitting compared to that. <laughs> but um, that is where the virtual is a little tricky. Does that make sense to also make that an additional item on the on the 16th, given that the state will be there? Are you asking me? I got both of you. Yes. And yes. I, I think that we can talk about that. I think that we need. Um, to have Dr. Lightbaum's expertise when it comes to this matter and the discussion about 
uh, what's appropriate. So um, yes, I think that makes a lot of sense to do it along with the approval of the racing officials on that day. Uh, Dr. Lightbaum, do you agree? Yes, and um, maybe we put them on as, as two separate items. Yes. They, yes. Um, two different requests on the qualifiers. Be separate and apart from the discussion of the round, the round table discussion will be the, the meat of the, the meeting. That's what was planned. And I just want to make sure, I think we will have time to add on these horse racing matters, but make sure that they don't, they're not in any way woven into the reopening discussion. We'll keep them separate and apart. So that would be number 18. So that would move to 16. Marianne, you, you, you understand what I'm thinking of in terms of the agenda group. And then in terms of the third item, I don't have this letter uh, right in front of me, I'm sorry. Um, let's see. I'm forgetting that one. Is that the track inspection? Yes. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have pulled it right up here. Uh, that would be part of the... Yeah, okay. I, um, go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, no, I, I just think that these requests really have to go through Dr. Lightbaum and all of them are already in process and um, the track inspection, the track has assured us that they will be doing that inspection, um, you know, in, in the appropriate manner. So I, I don't even know that this... But that will actually then be, that will be a check, um, a checklist item for our reopening discussion in the round table. Correct, correct. Yes. It's so not a separate right. agenda item. Excellent. Yeah, I think that makes good sense. That does make sense. Okay. And then, and, and yes, I agree with you entirely, Commissioner Cameron. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that none of the items really required us either to have more time or just sure. really should be distanced, uh, you know, from this core dis, uh, discussion because it might be too much of a distraction. Makes a lot of sense to separate and just, Excellent. you know, it, two, it, there really are two different topics here, we'll right? Separate them out. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But then at least everybody associated with the PPC horse racing will be part of it there anyway. So, and, and anyone who's interested, of course, can join as a public meeting. Um, Great. So those two items we've we've moved on. I won't go out of order again. I promise. Um, back to uh, administrative update for the 18th. Do you have an uh, uh, idea of whether you have anything? I can't. I can't think of anything specific right now that would be a sub uh, item under that. So I would just keep it as administrative update in general, and then uh, I can let the commission know. I I would anticipate you know keep the Commission abreast of the uh, staff activities and, and the uh, preparations for opening as well as uh, our office preparations at the casinos because we have to make sure that that's safe for our employees. Okay, one, one issue I'm wondering, Alex, if it would have to be separate um, for the, or if it would be part of an administrative update, the, the deadline, that legislative deadline do we want to have, perhaps that would be something that Karen should uh, include in her administrative update that we'll be yeah. launching that. Yeah, carefully. that would be great, sure. Okay, so you'll coordinate that. Legislative yeah. update on, on the racing date? The 18th feels like a good day to do that. Okay. And then whatever steps we have done in the past, if it's a, a letters that get issued. Okay. Commissioner Cameron or, or commissioners, if you remember that what we've done in the past to remind the legislature of that deadline. Okay, excellent. Todd, any regulations that we're gonna, or any, any legal matters that we need to address? Good morning. Uh, no, nothing specifically that needs to get on an agenda at the moment. There's lots of legal issues, but nothing that needs to be addressed here. Okay, excellent. We've talked about number three. That's scheduled for 10 o'clock on Thursday. I think we've reserved two and a half hours, but that's mainly to, for the public. I don't think it will go that long. Mainly to make sure that in case we have any technical issues. Anything else that we need to, to know for 
Thursday, Karen? I don't think so. I think we're in, in good shape. We've got documents for the packet. Those have all been provided in advance to the commission. Uh, so I anticipate we'll be in good shape. Excellent. Okay. June 18th is going to be a, a big meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's start. Um, Enrique and, and Derek for number four. You yeah, I'll, um, I'll ask Derek where we are in terms of um, the materials and uh, the two by twos, hopefully, but um, I think we should be on track for that. Uh, for the two by twos are already scheduled. Um, I think they're Monday of next week. So the materials will be ready, um, hopefully Friday, um, Saturday at the latest. Anything else? And that's our, our the first of, of two meetings, correct? Correct. This is just to get your first look at it, all the details in the packet, review it. Then we'll put it out for public comment for two weeks and come back and approve it at the next meeting. Great. Thank you. A lot of work. Yep. Thanks so much. Um, moving on to number five, license renewal. Yeah, so my understanding is that uh, things have been going well as far as uh, collection of the documents and that process. Uh, at that point, I'd like to turn it over to Joe and also Loretta because we've got to discuss the issue of suitability and then also moving forward with the relicensing process, you know, similar to a phase two process. So why don't we start with Loretta um, to check in on what her thoughts are on the suitability phase of relicensing. Good morning. Uh, good, mor good morning. The uh, PPC has provided all the documents required for uh, the background review piece of the relicensing. In fact, it's their documents have been in for a long period already. Uh, interviews have been conducted of all of the uh, new and um, required renewal uh, qualifiers. And we're in the final stages of uh, drafting a report on financial uh, suitability uh, and uh, preparing all of the checklists. All of the checklists uh, of the protocol that you approved are essentially completed. Uh, so we are really uh, trying to wrap, um, wrap the suitability piece up and I expect that we would be able to come to you uh, on suitability within the next few weeks. Um, uh, so that, are there questions about that now? Questions? So, so suitability is in great shape and we have not identified uh, any um, uh, problematic areas that would uh, require urgent attention. Thank you. Any questions for Loretta? Yeah, I just uh, just one for to clarify. Um, are you are you expecting to finalize suitability reports before the twenty fourth, which is you know, in other words, talk okay. about it the eighteen. Uh, because there's a number of things that um, you know that we uh, we have to determine that their application or uh, that their submission of documents is uh, substantially complete or or I forget the exact word but you know um, that we have quite a bit of uh, time after that to do analysis. That's uh, right. So on the suitability piece, the documents are all complete and Joe can provide you with the update on the other documents uh, that are not related to suitability. I do not expect to come before you before the 24th on suitability, uh, but it should be, um, I expect to come before you at the beginning of July. Thank you. So with respect to the other uh, documents, um, we're expecting the last batch of information to come in on Monday. Um, so we'll certainly be ready to report back uh, to the commission on Thursday as to the status of the submission of documents. And I think we should be able to make that determination whether or not 
um, the, the application is complete. Uh, and then from that point, I think we really need to uh, sit with staff and with the commissioners and, and really just kind of hammer out what we want to do for a schedule going forward. I think we, we don't want to conflict with the reopening of the casino. We know that all of our gaming agents and Bruce and Burke and those folks will all be very busy with that effort as as our licensees will. Um, so I, I know we want to have a public hearing. We want to do a number of, of different activities. So what I would suggest is we, we vote it on the 18th and then, um, you know, have some staff level meetings to determine, you know, sort of when we think, you know, try to put together a reasonable schedule going forward. Yeah, <clears throat> we, we will, we can plan on that. Um, Enrique, it's not uh, sufficiently complete. Thank you. So I think that we're getting uh, indicators from Joe and Loretta that they're comfortable that the licensee has met that, that standard, but we'll get updated. And then of course we have some days if we want more before the 24. Yep. And then uh, there's no, obviously we will want to finalize this. And I'm hearing Joe mention that they're gonna be dealing with reopening. There is no outside date, is there Loretta, um, that we have to finalize our review, but other than good practice and best practice. Right, under, under 30A, there is no outside date. Okay. Well, we will make an, uh, we will come together to, to come up with a good schedule that's realistic given all the challenges right now and yet be, be timely. And then we can come back, Karen, you can come back with that uh, at our next agenda setting meeting. Yes. Which, would be, which will precede, will we have one, um, Marianne, before the 18th? No, I guess not. I think our, our next agenda setting meeting is the June 24th. Uh, 24th, yeah. Right, June 24th. So on the, on the 24th, we should be able to have that, um, that schedule in place and we can discuss going forward. Then we're not being presumptuous about the 18th either. Right. Okay. Great, thanks, great work. All coming together. Uh, number, and Joe, number six. Yes, I thank you. Um, so community mitigation fund, we are moving along very well. We expect to have um, a memo out to the commission by uh, close of business Friday. So you'll have a, a good long time to review it. Um, we've got two by two set up for Monday, I believe. Um, it's our intent for the meeting on uh, the 18th to cover, we're not gonna go in the exact order of the memo. Uh, we're gonna go sort of by subject matter. And we intend to do the workforce uh, grants, the non-transportation planning grants. And then if we have time, we'll go into the uh, transportation planning grants. So what I, what I intend to do with the two by twos is to do uh, a briefing on those three categories uh, on Monday. And then we'll do an additional briefing the following week for the second part of this. I don't wanna overwhelm the commissioners with the whole thing all at once, um, unless unless you want to be overwhelmed all at once. <laughs> Who votes for being overwhelmed? <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> well, Bruce, Bruce and I have had the benefit of a number of meetings on this uh, on this on this process. So, but you good. like how, do you like how Joe is bifurcating it? That makes sense to the two of you. Absolutely, and I was going to mention I I'm not expecting that I'd be part of that two by two. Uh, Joe, but um, and it's really the other three commissioners who have not been part of this process. Who, who, who yeah, that? that's correct. That's that's the way we have it set up. We did not include uh, you or uh, Commissioner Stebbins. Okay, and uh, just as an update on the uh, just on the IT side of the house, because I know the, com if the commissioners. Uh, I think four of you are getting your computers migrated. I think on Friday. So I did confirm with IT that you, there is an, a way to you remotely access the shared drive through your computer. So if you don't know how to do that or, and would like to do that,
just email me, let me know, and I'll, I'll coordinate getting uh, all those that want to learn how to do that, some kind of training uh, in the next day or two, so that you are familiar with how to do that. Am I the one who's not getting their computer migrated? No, you, you it's, Kath, I think it's Kathy, Bruce. How much you say? Yeah, it's Eileen. This, the other, Eileen's not doing it that day. She's the following week, but I think all four, the other four, uh, Kathy, Gail, Bruce, and Enrique, you're all doing it on Friday, so you may not get your computer back till Monday. So there's a way to access it if you want to read things. Uh, I didn't oh. make a mistake, right? That's the, the that's Friday the, um, the 12th. Yep. Yep. Enrique, you mean um, there was a, an email that went out and, with a schedule. So you and I are in Boston. We have to pick up in Boston. And then Commissioner I'm glad you, I, I, I missed it. I'm glad you mentioned it now, Kevin. Yeah. Yes, um, double, double check and, uh, and just let me know if you'd like me to set something up because we could do some kind of training with yeah. IT in the next day or so if you'd like to do that. See, my, my concern is that if we want to use any of the weekend to access all of the community mitigation materials, which I know that Mary and Joe are going to plan on putting in the shared drive, will want to know how to access that without in our computers. So I am, um, I'll need that. I don't know if anybody else feels the same way, that, um, if you're going to want to or not. Enrique knows the materials probably so well he doesn't need to. <laughs> you know, they, I, I get them confused uh, from time to time, by the way. Uh, because there's multiple requests from the same couple of cities and, and whatnot, but no, I don't. Need, I don't. I'm not going to need to see all the documents over the over weekend. the weekend. The main thing is we're definitely going to want to see the memo. So if we we don't have our computers, we're all going to be able to access the memo through email. Correct. That that's correct. We, I will be emailing it out on Friday to all of the commissioners, and I'll be emailing it to myself and uh, a number of other folks because I lose my computer Monday morning. So when I'm doing my two by twos, it's going to be uh, a little challenging to do that without my computer. So I'm going to, I'm not exactly even sure right now that now that I even speak about that, I'm not sure exactly how I will, how I'll participate, but I'll figure it out. You know what, um, could, uh, could because of the HD meeting, I do know um, <clears throat> that I do know that you can access HD meeting through your, if you have your own private laptop, if you have that. If you have one, um, I know that because of prior experience with a little critter who took out my <laughs> So uh, the HD meeting could, was easily um, accessed, but I, I, I need a refresher on it. So it's good to just be thinking because we do have such a busy June 18th meeting, particularly for all of you who are preparing materials for us. We you know, uh, appreciate your planning on that. And then, and of course, the IT's efforts are mammoth and we really appreciate everything that they're doing. Right. So, you know, the little sacrifice we are making is nothing compared to all the work they're doing and it's going to really help us in the future. So, yes, uh, definitely. a little planning ahead. Yeah. And Enrique, I just forwarded you the email with the schedule so you can take a look at that. Thank you. Yeah. Enrique, we're going to be in Boston at the same time. <laughs> Okay, then we're good on number six. I do have a note here, um, vote before 11 for both five and six. Is that, are we losing Joe or something? No, you're this? losing me. Oh, okay. I have a virtual graduation, so. Congratulations, this is your fifth grader, correct? Yes, yep. That's yeah. exciting. End of, does that mean it's the end of the year for her too? Uh, yeah, so it, it, school ends at noon, and so traditionally they clap them out and do a whole thing, which obviously they can't do. So they're doing it um, remotely. They're doing it virtually, but they're nice. trying to time it for the same, <clears throat> like 11:30 to 12:30. So. Okay, and those are our two only are only two votes besides the minutes. I believe so. And, well, uh, we'll go continue, well, but that's, so that should work out. We'll be we'll be really cognizant of time. Excellent. Thank you. And I think we'll, we'll just need to decide what we want to do on, on how we want to do the votes. You know, we could either do them as we go, we could do them all at the end. We, we haven't really decided on that. I think when we have the two by twos, we should discuss, you know, how we want the votes to work. The, uh, 
the reason why it might make sense to do the votes at the end is because unless you can really compartmentalize the dollars, meaning each region, there would be at the end a thought about allocation, correct? Sir, potentially, yeah. I mean, if we, if if the commission, um, you know, changes some of the recommendations and goes one way or the other, I mean, it certainly could affect the dollar values. We're probably okay money-wise, but we would still have to recalculate everything and change charts and do a few other things to. to okay, so you're gonna. Okay. So we could talk about that. Yeah, Karen, that's a good thing to, for you in the team, your team to think about what's best, okay? Okay, yep. Good, thanks. Um, item number seven, Mark. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, we, we will be uh, set for that presentation by Dr. Volberg. Um, I, and in, in light, I, I, I will go ahead and send out that article to you uh, so you have it well in advance of turning in your computers. Um, I probably won't have the PowerPoint um, that accompanies the it for the presentation until Monday. That's fine. Um, but it's a it's a it's not a difficult read. Um, it's really it's really quite good. So um, I'll get you the journal article and uh, the PowerPoint Monday. Excellent. Thank you. Should have. <clears throat> you should just back up. In terms of the 11 o'clock, we've got the budget. Perhaps we do the budget after the license renewal in the community mitigation fund. For license renewal, do you, can you anticipate how much time? Karen, Joe? Um, I don't think it's going to take very long. Uh, you know, no, I don't either. I agree. Uh, this is really a matter of saying that, that they eat. Complete, right, Joe? Yeah, we either saying that the application is complete or if it's not complete, what's missing, and then the commission will need to make a determination whether or not, consider, even if it happened to be missing a piece of information, whether or not they would consider that to be sort of substantially complete. Okay. I, I mean, I, I 15 minutes? Yep. Yeah. Let's put down, let's put down uh, 15, 20 minutes. And the community mitigation, um, again, if we do 15 minutes, for that license renewal, which we absolutely have to adjust that, then uh, depending on whether or not we have a vote, the presentation for the mitigation fund might not be quite complete, or would it be co complete before 11? No, I don't think so, no. I mean, I was, I, you know, th this whole presentation, I thought we were gonna try to split this up, you know, into two pieces, you know, I mean. that's. Yeah, I think it, it may, I may have to miss, I may have to miss a couple of them. That's right. Along, yeah. So and, 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 try to minimize when I'm gone, but. Yeah. Commissioner O'Brien, um, you know, is, it needs to, to go to hers and without any guilt feelings. It's a celebration of <laughs> excited. But we also don't want to curtail that discussion. That might actually help us think about why a vote doesn't make, we could defer our voting until the following uh, meeting if we can right. keep track of all of our thoughts. And then um, uh, Commissioner O'Brien can go back to the tape too to see right. the yep. discussion. Right. So, um, so you're. I'm. I'm actually asking about time mainly from from Marianne, so that she can time out our meeting too, which I should have asked beforehand. And if I can jump in um, for the 18th, I expect to have two qualify two casino qualifiers for your consideration. Okay, well, we're going to go through the whole thing, um, all of the 18th, but I'm just going back. So, okay, I'm sorry. On P P no, no, no problem at all. I'm glad you told us. Um, for PPC license renewal, we've got about 15, 20 minutes. Community mitigation, we know it's going to be an extensive discussion. And if you had to guess. I mean, I would say to get through the, to get through the, the workforce, and the non-transportation planning would take at least an hour. Yeah. And Thanks. I was reserving the uh, the, the uh, transportation planning in case you know we had the time or the commission wanted to continue on or whatever, just to get it out, get more stuff out of the way. I guess. Okay. So you, if we put, let's just put down, let's put down 1.5 hours right now, and then just see 
where we are in our meeting. Yep, that's a good chunk of time. Okay, um, 15. And then uh, Dr. Um, Boberg's report. I would give that about 45 minutes. Probably 30 minute presentation is usually what I like, uh, I like to stick with. Um, there may be a little less discussion, just the format is, is less conducive for it. Okay. Um, so that brings me up to, I think, 2.5 hours right now. Right. And, and Kathy, just uh, so you know, the next two agenda items, um, we are wanting to push to the following meeting. So okay. uh, if you're stressed about the time and, and wanting to kind of, I'm, I'm not I, I want to help out. <laughs> not stressed at all. <laughs> oh, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> I'm displacing that stress right back to you, Mark. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I and I'm thinking, of friend, I'm thinking of our friend Elaine and her project. So, and I yeah, see. Me too. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the 18th, our next meeting was the special one for uh, community mitigation. That's the 25th. Can Otherwise, we add those? I. I we apologize. Could add, we could add number eight, perhaps. Um, okay. If could we add the? I'm sorry. I need to pull oh, up the agenda. And eight and nine. They are both um, not long agenda items, um, and I do feel really strongly that I want to try to put this in under uh, while while Elaine is still um, in the uh, well. Virtual still, still in our virtual boxes here. Right. Is, yeah. yeah. She's done. It's. She's been instrumental for that. So it would feel wrong that she's not there for it. I'm okay with that. Anybody object to that? Um, that means we just make that special uh, uh, meeting a little bit broader. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Kathy, I think that both of those items could probably be covered in about thirty minutes. Elaine, are you good with that? She's giving the thumbs up. Okay, um, great. So we are at 2.5 and then uh, uh, Loretta just added, we'll have two qualifying reports for the 18th. Yes, and I expect you'll have the reports by the end of this week. Oh, thank you. Is everybody okay, my fellow commissioners? You're all on, except for Eileen on mute. Speak up if you have any questions or think, is that too much? Is that gonna work for you? That, that works. Good. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. So then we will have an agenda setting meeting on today's date. On the twenty, the twenty fourth. Then we move right to another special meeting on the twenty fifth. Correct. Yeah. So we're yeah. for working remotely. We're on a pretty aggressive cadence here, everyone. So thank you yeah. and congratulations on everyone's just great work. There's a lot that's required in our ordinary times, and you haven't missed a beat on those matters. And then, of course, addressing all the additional work. It's, very impressive. Okay, so now anticipating, is there anything else that anyone has for the 18th besides the two additional suitability reports? Nothing? Okay. Those usually go pretty, um, pretty quickly, so yes. Marianne. All right, moving on to the 25th. We've got number 10, that's the community mitigation, and then we'll just have um, eight and nine addressed. And do you think you're gonna need a good couple of hours on that day, especially if we do the voting? Or, or do you think three hours? What do you want, Joe? You know, I would, I'm hopeful that, you know, that we can get to it quicker, but I'd probably book three hours. Yeah. Just to be on the safe side. Um, and, you know, my, my, preference would be to get through it all on uh, the 25th and not have to push it out to the second. Um, and, 
you know, obviously I'll leave it to the commission's discretion on, on how they're feeling on, on getting through these and how quickly we're moving through them. It's, it's difficult to predict how quickly or slowly some of these might go. There are a couple of, uh, I won't call them controversial, but a couple that, you know, the, the, the review team had some difficulty with and is looking really to the commission for some guidance on some of these things. So uh, there will be some certainly that will have some uh, probably fairly robust discussion. So I asked this a couple of, a couple of options for the meeting on the 25th because I'm hearing it'll be about 3.5 because we've added numbers eight and nine. We could start earlier on that day. We can absolutely have a lunch break and we you know return to our computers and our phones. Uh, it's a very um, meaty discussion and we will have votes. And I know we're going to have very thorough recommendations, but I also know all five of us will have questions. We know that there's a limited number of dollars available. We know there are lots of strong applications. So what's your preference? Starting earlier, having a lunch, break, having starting earlier and a lunch break? We certainly Well, I guess I would suggest, you know, doing Mark stuff first to just get that out of the way and then we'll jump into the Community Mitigation Fund and just start that and go until we can't go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair to Mark and Elaine, that makes sense to start off and get that work done. And then Karen can also address anything that might have come up on the administrative update. But in terms of the timing, is there a preference for my fellow commissioners to start earlier? Or Gail, what are you thinking? You know, I it, it either way works for me. I, I don't mind starting earlier, and um, if we feel like it's so, um, sometimes it's, it's a little more challenging remotely to go for hours and hours. So maybe we do take a quick lunch break and just refresh. Um, but I, but I really, I could do whatever anyone else wants. Frankly, I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. I know you have children at home, Bruce, you have children at home, Enrique, you have children at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how does that work, even though I know it's getting later in the season for school, but you're going to have other challenges as... Yeah, I actually have them in stuff later in the afternoon, so starting a little earlier is helpful for me. Oh. But I do think that, not only for my sake, probably for Enrique's sake, and for the sake of being able to really give attention to these, I'm going to want a break in the middle. Like three hours straight on one topic, to me, is just not effective anymore for the people that are I agree. I agree. Enrique? Yeah, I, I like the break idea, mostly because we're coming to with some of these recommendations with a split, as, as Joe suggested, with kind of like a judgment call. And I would not like to see that out of tiredness, everybody says, well, well let's just, you know. Right. I, I just want to vote one way or another just to get this over with. Um, so maybe it's a little bit of both, a little earlier and with a, with a lunch break. And uh, let's see how we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with starting a little bit earlier. And I think at some point we'll just know when we need to take a break and it'll probably be around that lunchtime hour anyway. So. Right. And it makes earlier sense. Fine. My kids are still usually in bed at that hour anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we thinking? Nine thirty maybe, and then and then thinking about a break at around noon. Does that make sense? Does that make sense rather than nine? Yeah. Nine might be too just a bit too early. Let's do nine thirty. Yeah. And um, and I am shooting in my mind to try to have this be a really in depth discussion about one topic. Of course, we will give due attention to. Elaine and Mark's um, matters at the beginning, but immerse ourselves in the, this discussion and hopefully be able to take the votes needed so that our heads are in it when we make those, those votes rather than having to go to July 2nd. Um, so we'll just make sure, Marian, that Jamie kind of clears our schedules because I think we'll probably be wiped out pretty much at the end of that. Um, you know, no back to back meetings after that. And 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 go right for the votes mm -hmm. and i think it just makes sense to plan on the votes all at that meeting joe given uh the the 18th uh, commissioner o'brien will will need to catch up virtually yeah i think i think that totally makes sense you know obviously on the day one if there are any 
if the discussion around things results in any changes or apparent changes, you know, we'll we'll be able to structure those for that last meeting and and, and you know, wrap up yes. tables and charts and the dollar values and all those things we need to do. Okay, great. Great, good. So that takes care of number 10, the 25th. Um, We'll, we'll keep on the agenda on number 11, uh, but let's put for number 10 a vote, Mary Ann, reserve that just as our own note. And then the 11th, we'll keep it on for now, but with the anticipation that we will win back time on that meeting. And then we can keep uh, number on number 12 for the Enhanced Code of Ethics update. I'm going to meet with Todd and, and Bruce. I'll get a uh, meeting on the schedule for next week. Um, you know, as long as we, as you, as long as you two have time, all right. And then we can at least decide at that at the meeting on the um, second about process, if not substance, too. Number thirteen. This is another. That's why I'm a little bit concerned because this is going to be a, a good substantive discussion on the thirteenth. Correct, Derek. Derek and team, uh, Christian Zuniga, Agnes, and Doug. That's uh, correct. Yeah, it it uh, it should, uh, you know. But there's also the benefit of uh, two by two on a prior presentation. So, um, uh, but but right. yeah, it, 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 could, it could be it could be a substantive discussion. Okay. So, how much time do you think that will take? So for our presentation, 10 to 15 minutes, we'll just update you on any public comments. Um, but if you have a lot of questions and input and discussion before voting on it, um, that's been anywhere from a half an hour to an hour, depending on what the public comments come in looking like. So I'd say 45 minutes at the least. At, at, the, at the least for the most? At the least. Oh, okay, got it. All right. Magic waves number 14. Oh, is there anything else that people are anticipating for the beginning of July? Karen, anything that you? No, I don't have anything I can think of. One matter that we haven't talked about, um, that I haven't discussed even with you, Karen, but Alex um, and Elaine and I did discuss recently a topic, maybe I brought it up to you, Karen, but um, on simulcasting, we haven't really had an update on the state of simulcasting. Um, and it occurred to me that we might want to have a little bit of a substantive report on really what's allowed. Uh, some people may not appreciate that Massachusetts allows for um, betting on horse racing to be done from our mobile devices at home within Massachusetts. And, and that's an important um, an important item right now, given a lot of news around gaming options for folks to understand. We also have a piece of revenue that comes through simulcasting and has been coming through simulcasting um, because there has been thoroughbred horse racing that's continued. And I don't think I have fully appreciated that. It was revealed that it's a little bit complicated. So I wondered if there might be an opportunity, Alex, for you and with Commissioner Cameron to maybe, and maybe it's the July 2nd meeting if there's time to just discuss that. I, I know that we brought up the deadline um, and that, that will get, the, the legislative piece will get addressed on the 18th, but I wonder if it might make sense for you to just you know, give us a little bit of a, a you know, primer on all things simulcast and ADW. ADW, that's the correct. Yes. I, I want to invert all the time. Then now I'm self correcting after I've corrected. Just to clarify, um, the tracks haven't been um, simulcasting because that implies that uh, the people are there at the racetrack betting. Um, they have, uh, Suffolk and Plain Ridge have been doing account wagering because that's all online. Right. So that's another piece. And, and again, thank you for clarifying that because that's, you know, I, I learned from Alex and then didn't apply my learning that. ADW is if you set up your account and you can then therefore bet from your mobile device. And 
and it's used geofencing. All these um, issues that we you know, have explored when considered sports betting. So it just would be, I think, an interesting, um, an interesting topic for us to learn as a team from you, Alex, and make sure everyone's sure. clear. And then also for Chad to describe um, you know, what the state of revenue is and where it goes and, and how it's applied. Sure. So, so Alex, why don't we, um, with Todd, set up a, a meeting prior to and just really talk about what would be of value to the commission, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Commissioner. I think that makes sense. I thought of it last night. I just hadn't, um, in terms of what could be a new item. That makes sense but... because it is relevant and there have been changes and just to understand it is always a helpful thing. Great, thanks. So um, we'll just put that on for the second. A simulcast ADW um, update. Or not update, just a report. Really for information sharing. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm now back to number 14. Mark, July 30th. Uh, yes. It's a long ways out, but um, we'll be set for that. Mm. Um, and just to clean up the notes a little bit, um, Marianne, that's also showing up as number 21 on the agenda setting notes. Okay, you're going to be all set for that. Any other item for July 30th? It's a second. We didn't, we, we, um, we don't have a meeting in between, but it would be the 16th if we stayed with the same cadence, right? That's right. Karen, would um, should we res we should reserve that on the calendar still, correct? Yes. yes, I would keep that there. Okay. We just don't right now have an item, but you know we'll watch our agenda setting. But the the full meeting would be the 16th. Is there anything for the 16th if the 30th feels too far out? Okay, we'll just reserve it. And then we've got um, items for the 30th. Now let's just look under, under items from under review. Todd, number 15. 15 is interesting. I was going to say it wasn't urgent, but then I started thinking that as the casinos begin to reopen, if there is a lot of hiring or people who need to get licensed or registered, it may become relevant. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it might be more urgent than I had been thinking about. Um, and it's certainly, I'm not, I'm not certain how much relicensing or licensing and registration we're anticipating as part of reopening activities. But I think this one would maybe plug into that. Nevada? We'd be prepared to go forward with that at really at any time. Um, I, could have some advanced conversations and have had some already uh, individually with commissioners, but if you want to uh, put that um, uh, on one of the upcoming meetings, uh, we'd be prepared to, to discuss that. And Todd, this would be a policy discussion. This isn't looking at any draft or regulatory changes at this point. Well, there's, yeah, I mean, there's a statute that governs the use of this information. Um, our use of it is slightly different, um, and we do have a regulation that addresses this, so they would all work hand in hand. But at the end of the day, when all is said and done, based upon my reading to date, this would be a policy decision that the commission would ultimately make as to whether you want to use this type of information or not. Can I don't... Yep, sorry. No, oh, sorry, Todd. Um, if I remember correctly, I, I heard the public comments. Was there, was there an argument presented that we actually, our practice might conflict with the statute? Um, it was certainly implied. Um, as I read it, I, I, don't, I don't think that she necessarily made that case. I, it, I'd have to go back and read the comment, but I think the implication was just that you shouldn't use it as a matter of good sound public policy because other similarly situated entities can't use this information. Um, so it seemed to me at the time, and I haven't looked at this in a couple of weeks, that um, we could legally use it and we have, you know, we're allowed to at the moment, uh, but the commission may consider 
whether it just doesn't want to use it um, consistent with what the statute says. And Kathy, my understanding is when we looked at this before, they did we did do a legal analysis and confirmed that what we were doing was in fact uh, in compliance with the law. It, and I've recently reviewed that and, and uh, concur with that as a, a recent review. Um, and uh, it, it is true that uh, employers are on different footing than a licensing agency like us. And the letter that was submitted was an invitation for the commission to treat such material more like an employer would be required to treat it. Um, but was not a, 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 a suggestion that we were uh, contrary to law. Um, you know, my suggestion now is if you, again, I, I have had recent discussions with a number of commissioners. If you'd like us to uh, sort of complete that and then come back um, uh, and uh, determine where this should sit on the agenda, uh, you know, maybe that's an approach you'd, you'd want to go with. Well, I guess I haven't had that um, that discussion with you yet, Loretta, so I look forward to that. Okay. Um, I can pull out um, Ms. Carrion's, Carrion's um, letter that she submitted. Um, I do feel like there will be relicensing because of the furloughs, correct? You're anticipating that, that there'll well, be new employees or do they feel there, that It's a matter of if employees don't come back. Right. And they need to hire different employees and also the level of, of hiring that they're going to do. Right. Right. If they have the people that they need still, then they will use those first, but. Right. Okay. July 2nd, does it seem like that's the right place to put it on for a discussion at least? Sure. And if it, you're not ready at the time, we can we can move it. Okay. Does that make sense, everyone? Uh, sure. You might, you might have the advantage of the uh, discussion. Eileen, have you, do you feel that that works? Commissioner O'Brien? That's fine. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> and I think I, I comfortable that what we're doing complies with the law, so I think talking about what else you might consider is fine. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Now we're back to Alex, your items. Number 16, uh, should we keep that under review still? I know that there's still some discussion, Todd and yes. Alex, under review? Yes, that can stay under review. Okay. And then number 17, we've moved to the 16th of June. Correct. Number 18, we've moved to the 16th of June. Uh-huh. What about 19? That can stay under review. Okay. And number 20. That's ready to go on um, the agenda. It can go on the um, 16th if uh, you want. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't ask about that. Okay, good. Well, I guess we didn't go down through. All right. Um, And then um, I didn't know if the commission wanted to have um, Suffolk and Raynham submit their reopening plans um, for their simulcasting facilities, and if we wanted that on an agenda. The simulcasting would become available at PPC with the reopening plan. So where does that fit into the reopening guidelines? Well, um, the simulcasting is in the phase three as well as the racing. Right. So do we treat it as the gaming floor or do we treat it as the race racing? racing? Well, um, PPC, at PPC it's considered part of the um, gaming floor, but, um, and that's why we don't, um, the um, pair mutual clerks who work in that building are now um, licensed through the gaming licensing through Bill Curtis's group um, instead of under racing, which um, at Suffolk and Raynham, those pair mutual clerks are licensed under racing still. 
So Karen is, uh, do we, do we put uh, this item on simulcasting for Tuesday's discussion with horse racing or do we, will it be addressed tomorrow? As far as the, the protocols, I, right. I would, I, I would put that on Tuesday instead of on Thursday. Okay, then you'll feel better prepared for it. Because right. it I think I, keeping I, all the horse racing uh, items together is going to cause less confusion. Yeah, but I do see where there's that, that crossover right. in terms of the yeah. game floor. What do you think, Gail? It, it would be nice to see a plan from them. Mm -hmm. um, to just to make sure they understand uh, all of, you know, what the governor's office is saying, as well as what other best practices there are in simulcasting around the country. So I would be interested in seeing a plan, it was just a short plan really outlining their, um, what they anticipate doing when they can reopen. I just don't know if we're giving them enough time to have that plan into us by Tuesday to discuss. I, feel yeah, like I know um, Chip was, uh, last time I talked to him, he thought he would be ready to have um, information, the plan ready to go on the meeting for the 18th. Okay. Um, and that, sure. that would work for me because remember, the Tuesday meeting is really about PPC's racetrack and getting racing reopening. So sim I would be fine pushing back the simulcasting plans. Um, at another date because it's really a different even group of people because then we're bringing in Chip Tuttle and, and it's really Carney. about yes. and Mr. Carney exactly um, we're on Tuesday we're trying to keep it about reopening of racing that is not Mojo just to be clear <laughs> that's that's Chippy is out in the hall <laughs> <too>. <laughs> I, I, I uh, saw uh, Commissioner Zuniga's uh, chat and I was going to take no responsibility, but in this case, I can say. <laughs> you know, Bruce, Bruce chatted to me privately that he had put GP away. And, <laughs> and I thought for a second that I had wrongly accused Mojo, but it was indeed Mojo the first time. It was Mojo before, but because both of us are on calls, usually we try to take dog responsibility. We have not yet stashed him up in the attic. That's not a bad idea though. Um, so uh, and back to the business at hand, in terms of the simulcasting, again, um, I hear you, Karen, saying it will probably be more appropriate for PPC simulcasting to be discussed at the racing discussion on Tuesday. But I also hear Alex saying that it's a bit of a combination because I'm imagining that the reopening guidelines from PPC extend into that simulcasting space. Yeah, I mean, it's true. You think about the property. So I mean, I'm, I'm open to do it either way. And we can bring um, it up on Thursday. We can bring it up tomorrow. And if yeah, they you have could, an You could discuss it at both. Just make yeah. sure, you know, at least address it. That yeah, I, I actually think it makes sense to have it with racing on Tuesday, only because it's, it is, um, all in that one building, the racing yeah. building. I understand the licensing is different, but I also think that may be very helpful for the other two simulcasting sites. May not have the experience of Penn, meaning, you know, they have so many facilities around around the country, they will have best practices, and I'm hopeful that could help our other two simulcasting locations. So I don't have any problem with separating it out as um, Kathy, you, you, you mentioned we could just stick to PPC on Tuesday and then a little bit later look at the plans for um, our other two locations. Um, and, you know, I think they would have had time by then to listen to what Penn's doing, formulate their own plans and get them into us and we can discuss. Right. And, and Alex, I'm sure they'll welcome any input that you have for guidance where, you know, what you learn from. PPC too, so we can be of assistance to them and and deal with it on the 18th because phase three will be getting closed. So that adds Marianne another piece of work um, for the 18th. 18th will be a, a busy day. Hey, um, Alex, I have a question. When, when is the Simulcasting bill expire? 
um, expires July 1st. Okay. Right. So on the 18th, Karen's going to address that in the administrative update, and we should just prepare to reach out to the legislature and governor's office. I think we've talked about that informally. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I was just trying to figure out whether it, it made a difference to try to look at the plan. Um, in the, well, the main thing is that they, I think the, the, the other date is not only that date, which is the right date to think of too, but depending on when phase three mm -hmm. starts, they might actually get a, a green light ahead of July 1st, depending on when. If they consider the first week of phase two or the second week of phase two, what does that mean for phase three? Yeah. Or, yeah, you know, of course, it's always data driven as opposed to date driven. Right. So probably going much later than the 18th is not going to be helpful. You okay with that, Karen? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Alex? Yes. Okay, great. Then moving on to um, number 21, Mark, we have on for July 30th. And uh, the update on section 97, do you have, do you know yet what you want to do with that? I'm looking for Mark. Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, great. Right. Thanks. Um, yeah, let's keep that as um, pending. Again, it just it requires the coordination of our licensees as well as um, another group of of experts across um, a couple different state um, yeah. agencies. So I want to make sure that we're we're set for that. Good. Okay. No need to inundate them. All nope. right. Number twenty three, Jill. Yep. This is still pending. Okay. Well. Thank you. Number 24, compliance, Karen? Yes, let's keep that under review. Okay, Commissioner Zuniga. Uh, let's keep it under review as well, number 25, but uh, I really wanna make a conversation with you and uh, Elaine and, and Karen. Yeah, I, you know, I have that on my to-do list, and Ricky, I'll set that up for the beginning of next week, if that works for you. Yeah. I have that on my list, I should have done that last week, I just. Yeah, I should have followed up myself, but you know, it's not, it's not urgent, there's, Plenty of other things on everybody's plates. Yeah, nice to get Elaine in the mix before uh, she leaves, though. Uh, temporarily leaves. Okay. Anything else that anyone wants to put under review or to maybe schedule? I see no one raising a hand, and I don't I, see I anyone. I have something, on. Madam Chair. Yeah, Loretta, yes. I, I do have something. Um, uh, I'd like to uh, work with Bill Curtis uh, and provide a status update regarding the independent directors of gaming vendor primary uh, applicants and licensees. Back in November, you gave us some direction about who to designate uh, amongst you know, all the independent directors and you directed us that to begin with, we should designate as qualifiers independent non-executive directors who also serve as chairman or chairwomen of the boards of directors. And we said back in November that we would update you on that at around the six month mark. We're a little over the six month mark now. I'd like to uh, collect that data uh, with Bill and with uh, Kate Hart again and uh, come back uh, and give you an update on how many we are, where they are in the um, in, in best process, and whether we should continue doing what we're doing or expand our um, uh, designations uh, to capture more uh, independent directors. So if we could keep that under review now and give me a chance to uh, have further uh, discussion with Bill and Kate, uh, then at the next meeting, I will suggest a, a date uh, for us to actually give you the update. Okay, and in the meantime, I know I would benefit if, if you, and I can look myself if you don't have a chance, Loretta, if you could let us, if you could remind us which date we had that okay, discussion. Okay, I'll, I'll pull the, I've got that in my notes. Uh, it's a November date, but I'll, okay. I'll pull up the link. And then we can just look at the uh, discussion. I want to be, be reminded of, of what, I don't want you to have to repeat everything that you said there. Okay. So, thank you. Um, and so we'll put that under review with the idea that we might have a 
July date where if you're prepared, you want to go forward on it. Thank Great. you. Thank you for the follow up. Anything else, Todd? Anything else that you can think of right now? Uh, nothing comes to mind, but I'll, Stay I'll tuned. be vigilant. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, Todd, if you decide that, that for any reason that you want an update, legislative update for the commissioners, we can schedule the appropriate executive session. So, you know, just keep that in mind as we go forward, when, you know, when that might be a useful tool for you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Everybody all set? I think we're good. That's a pretty... Um, pretty busy schedule so thank you everyone and and uh i know that enrique bruce and and gail and i mean i know you feel the same way the team's just roaring through and great work do i have a motion motion Move to adjourn thanks bruce. so wait who moved and who seconded i think i think gail moved, moved all second <laughs> okay roll call gail hi Enrique. Hi, thank you, everybody. Um, Eileen. Hi, thank you. Bruce. Hi, and uh, a shout out to Derek for his t-shirt, which I appreciate. Wait, I missed it. I missed it. Derek. I can't. What is that? Oh. I can't see. Huh? Oh, he's coming up. Is that better? It says you're <laughs> killing It's from the same lot. Oh, yeah. Awesome movie. Classic. Classic. Thanks, Derek. Brought a oh. smile. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> <laughs> Not an invitation for Eric to weigh in. <laughs> Always an invitation. Always an invitation. He's got to represent. Great movie. Everybody should watch. Upside. Kevin Hart, Brian <laughs> Cranston. Don't miss it. Love you all, man. Have a great day. Bye, Eric. I vote Bye. yes. So we're all set. Meeting adjourned. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.